Hi, I am Lauren from Speech Clinic. We are a pediatric speech pathology service based within Brisbane. Thank you so much for sending in all of your questions today. We can't wait to get started. The first question that we received related to S sound development in children who are two and a half years of age. Now, typically speaking, we do not expect a child who is only two and a half to have a fully formed S sound. Realistically, at this age, a little one may be simplifying that S sound to either a tit or a dit sound. S is a sound that we expect children who are three and a half to be using appropriately. In saying this though, if you find that at any age your child's S sound is quite slushy or their tongue is moving quite far forward in their mouth or even moving between their teeth, then that would be reason to touch base with a speech pathologist. Another question that we received is asking about the best songs to use to work on consonants. And in this question, the person mentions that their child who is three years old is having some difficulty with their speech sounds. So generally speaking, we do expect that a three-year-old has developed the vast majority of their speech sounds. There is still some speech sound development that is occurring in the fourth and fifth year of life. But if your child is three, you should be expecting them to be consistently using their p, b, t, m, d, w, k, g, and even their s, f, and v sounds. So generally speaking, if you have a three-year-old who is really failing to use these sounds, to use them consistently within their words, that is a great reason to touch base with a speech pathologist. In relation to what sounds may be best, really nursery rhymes can be really great for children. Generally speaking, if you're using anything, whether a song or a book to target your little one's speech sound development, we would always recommend that parents do it slowly with children and that they overemphasize what they are saying. But of course, if your little one does seem to be falling short of their milestones, touching base with a speech pathologist is always best. Another question that we received was inquiring about the inheritance of stuttering. Now in this question, the person mentions that their husband has a predominant stutter and they are concerned that their daughter may inherit this or even mimic his speech. Now stuttering is something that can definitely run in families. And so parents who are aware that either them or their partner has a history of stuttering within the family should be particularly monitoring their little one's speech sound development. Of course, if either you or your partner does have a stutter, it doesn't necessarily mean that your child will, but of course, being aware and really proactive is always a great step to take. Now, I wouldn't necessarily be concerned that a little one whose parent stutters, that they will necessarily mimic their speech, but again, just continuing to be really proactive and monitoring both their speech sound and language development will help to put any concerns to ease. We also received a question from a parent asking specifically about speech sound development for children who are two. And this parent wanted to know at what point should they see a speech pathologist? Now we do expect children who are two to be well on their way with their speech sound development. If your child is two, you should be expecting them to be consistently using their p, b, m, t, d, and w sounds. Children who are two should also be starting to use early multisyllabic words. So you should be hearing your little one easily producing words like baby, mummy, table, and maybe even bubble. Now we did receive several questions from parents wanting to know more about the topic of lisps. And lots of parents were generally asking, should we expect our little one to have a lisp at any stage? Now the take home answer to this is no. We do not expect our little one to present with a lisp at any stage in their speech sound development. Now, of course, if your little one has lost their two front teeth, it may be a little bit tricky for them to produce their S sounds accurately at that time. But again, the take home message is no. If your little one's tongue is protruding out between their teeth, or even if their S sounds are sounding quite slushy, that is definitely a reason to touch base with your speech pathologist. Now, our last question today is going to focus on the topic of tongue ties. Now, we did receive lots of questions from parents on this topic, and even in our clinic, it is something that parents do routinely touch base with us about. And the general question that parents are asking is, if my child has a tongue tie, will this necessarily impact upon their speech? And the answer is no. Having a tongue tie will not necessarily impact upon your little one's speech sound development. 
Now, lots of amazing information can be found on the Speech Pathology Australia website about tongue ties, the different kinds of tongue ties, and the steps that you can take as a parent if a tongue tie truly is impacting upon your little one's speech sound development. Now, generally speaking, if your little one has been able to latch on and feed with ease and they are able to move their tongue up and around, there is no reason that a tongue tie will impact upon their speech sound development. However, we do always suggest that parents continue to monitor their little one's speech sound development. And if you do have any concerns touching base with a GP, a dentist or a speech pathologist around the presence of a tongue tie is a great step to take. Thank you so much to everyone who sent in a question today. We absolutely loved getting to answer them all and we really hope that our information was helpful. Of course, everything that we've spoken about today is really just a general guide. We would recommend that if you do have concerns for your little one, that you touch base with your local speech pathologist who will be able to answer and provide you with information that is specific to your child.